Hello everyone, the Lone Wolf here with some Terraria for you guys. Uh, welcome to my personal little world. Uh, it's an extra world that I created. And uh, as you can see, I've upgraded a little bit. I'm in uh, full demonite armor. And so I thought I'd take this opportunity to, uh, to make a video about the progression path in uh, Terraria that I followed uh, in the hopes that it might be useful for uh, some people that either want to try out the game or are stuck on some of the roadblocks that I came across. So, in, uh, in, this, in this world, I'll talk a little bit about the setup. First of all, the place where you spawn is pretty important, because it is also the place that your uh, magic mirror will always teleport you. So, if possible, I'd say build your house and uh, the village around that spot. Um, <coughs> on the, the first uh, floor below the ground here, I, uh, I gathered all the graft crafting tools. Uh, I can easily expand uh, this... Uh, this place to the right if I need more space and then below there I have the, the same for chests where I can put all my stuff like uh, potions and uh, ores <coughs> and all that so yeah this is the setup that I'm going for an easy uh, extra uh, <coughs> area here so I can climb up and continue to expand if more NPCs uh, come here and uh, so I, I would suggest also to try and uh, keep your village uh, within one screen uh, because uh, it will avoid, avoid uh, uh, spawns from uh, mobs within that area so I put up two rather high walls on both sides just to protect the village in case of uh, larger attacks and as long as I stay here in the middle there will not be any spawns within, uh, within the screen so I think that's pretty important Alright, to move on to the first uh, phase of the progression path, I, uh, I went to my uh, first world, which I consider my excavation world, uh, just uh, because I find a lot of stuff in this one and in multiplayer worlds, and then I gather that and bring it to my, f my, uh, my other one to make the tools and uh, keep uh, large stashes of uh, useful items. So the first, first uh, thing you want to do is... Uh, oops, wrong button there is actually <coughs> to uh, find these uh, natural caves like the one that I was going to enter there and just start exploring those um, your main focus will be to find those uh, big hearts you'll find in the map because they will give you extra hit points to find chests because they will give you uh, useful items that you can use or equip uh, items like the magic mirror and let me just get rid of this one like the magic mirror or the flippers I think are very uh, nice and the cloud in a bottle as well for the double jump and in the meantime just try and gather all the uh, ores you can find uh, <coughs> the iron especially is very useful to make uh, several items and your goal should be if you can uh, if you can uh, stand to grind that long to go for a full set of gold armor and a full set of gold weapons and tools if, uh, if that takes a bit too much time for you, I'd say go at least for the gold weapons and then for uh, silver armor. Um, when, you, when you reach uh, that point, you should have around 300 hit points and you should also have come across 3 or 4 mysterious eyes which you can, uh, which you can use to summon Cthulhu, which is the first boss. Now, before you uh, start on, uh, on Cthulhu, I would highly recommend to go for the sword I'm using here, which is uh, called after I get rid of that one, which is called the blade of grass, uh, because it's actually not that difficult to to get it. All you need is a silver broadsword, and then to find a jungle zone, and you want to farm the uh, the bees that are around there for their stingers, and then let me just see if I can find. Uh, one of the plants you need, also the jungle spores, so there you see one of the bees uh, down there who will drop the spores and then there are also some luminescent plants there that drop jungle spores which are uh, the other part of the uh, of the, the items you need to craft the blade of grass uh, together with a silver broadsword so it just takes a, a bit of grinding right here you see uh, this uh, pulsating plant here it uh, drops jungle spore 20 of those, 20 stingers and a silver broadsword and you're good to go. Uh, you can make the blade of grass there. It's a very powerful sword and very useful I'd say to go and kill Cthulhu. 
at that point, uh, when you're like in full gold, full silver, whatever, uh, with the blade of grass, uh, just find a, a good a good open spot and uh, at night summon Cthulhu a few times. Uh, you should be able to kill him pretty easily. You know, uh, try and get rid of him. He will yield you a large uh, amount of demonite ores. And at that point, you will uh, probably find that. With the demonite bars, you can't really create anything very useful. So that's gonna be another roadblock you'll encounter because you, what you actually want is... I uh, can't really remember the name, but I have a few in my piggy bank here. Uh, some shadow scales, and those are only dropped from the Eater of Worlds. So the next uh, part of your, <coughs> of your uh, progression is going to try and find a way to get to the Eater of Worlds. So to get to the Eater of Worlds, what you're looking for is a place called Corruption. Uh, you know the music changes, so you'll definitely notice it. But depending on, on what you encounter first, uh, there will be two possible paths for you to, to reach uh, the Eater of Worlds. So the first one is that you find uh, actually some pretty open space of Corruption, where you can uh, farm uh, the mini Eaters, I think. Uh, they're small heads that fly around. And they will job, uh, drop rotten chunks together with vile uh, powder, which you get from the local mushrooms. Uh, you can make uh, what's it called worm food, which will uh, summon the boss in the same way as the Eye of Cthulhu summons, as the mysterious eye summons the Eye of Cthulhu. Uh, but in my case, the very first uh, corruption I came across were actually a large number of well, large. Three or four um, <coughs> shadow spheres or shadow orbs, yeah, shadow orbs, and these are surrounded by ebonstone, which is uh, the materials you see over here. And the big problem you'll have here is that your gold pickaxe won't be able to mine through that. So the way around that is by purchasing dynamite from the demolition man in your village, because that can actually blow through this ebonstone, and then. Uh, just uh, shatter the orbs. Uh, every time you, you shatter one, there is a small chance that uh, an Eater of Worlds will get summoned. Uh, in my case, it's uh, the third one that, uh, that did it. So the third orb summoned uh, a, an Eater of Worlds. And uh, yeah, once you have that, you don't even have to kill him. Just uh, get rid of one of his uh, parts and it, he will drop some of these shadow scales. Uh, there you get uh, a mini eater. What the hell? Oh. You have a mini eater over there. I'll just go and uh, kill him. Maybe he'll drop one of the chunks. Let's go. Well, no, no such luck. But those are the guys you want to farm then for the worm food. And uh, like once you have six shadow scales. Uh, you can just uh, get the hell out of there even if you want, because uh, then with the demonite from from the Eye of Cthulhu, you have uh, plenty to make your demonite pickaxe. Uh, I'm not sure if it's called demonite pickaxe anymore, but uh, anyway, you're the, the next uh, tier of pickaxe, which can actually uh, mine through anything, and at that point, you're you're really sitting golden to go for uh, for the rest of uh, the stuff that uh, that you might want. And uh, the, th the first thing uh, that you'll want to do is to get some um, some lava mixed with water, which will uh, which will yield you obsidian, and you can then mine it just like any other ore. Uh, I'm using a molten uh, pickaxe here, but you can uh, you can use the demonite one for that. Uh, you'll want to gather a, a good amount of those actually, because with this obsidian you can make. Um, the obsidian skull which I have here, which grants you one defense and immunity to fire blocks, which is uh, what you need if you want to mine uh, meteors that uh, drop down from uh, from the sky, which will also start happening at this point and has a small chance of happening whenever you uh, you destroy an uh, an uh, shadow orb. Yep. Uh, and let me just get over to the last. Uh, Parts because you know, uh, just the obsidian alone won't yield you any armor, but you actually need the final type of ore at this point in the game, which is found in the underworld. And so let's just try and get there. I hope 
I'm heading in the right direction. Should be here somewhere. Yep, so there we go. This is uh, the background tile for the underworld. And one of the big problems you'll encounter here is that, is that there's always a really big drop to get to the good stuff. And uh, my way around it uh, has been to create a, a stone structure tube-like towards one of the, the mini dungeons that you find here. Uh, so these are these mini dungeons and in, in here you will actually find uh, the demon forges as well and as you can see I mined out to the side and uh, the objective here is to get to this final type of ore let me just work my way down here so I can show you a bit of an example just keep going there they are just you have to be a little bit careful with them because these hellstones will actually turn into lava blocks when you mine them. So you want to be careful what you do here. But yep, these hellstones with, with the obsidian will actually yield you uh, hellstone bars, I think it is. Which, uh, can, uh, which uh, are what I use to make this fiery greatsword, this molten pickaxe, uh, molten fury as well, the bow and this molten hammax. So yeah, that's uh, my progression path in, uh, in Terraria so far. Now there are a few aspects of the game that I haven't gone through yet. Um, like uh, the meteor which I mentioned earlier. There are also special uh, events like uh, a blood moon rising or a goblin army invading. And then finally there is also the, the dungeon which I haven't uh, visited yet. But if I find the time I'll, uh, I'll do those and uh, maybe make some videos about them. We'll see. And uh, anyways, uh, I hope uh, some of you might find this useful and I'll see you guys next time.